Terra forming an asteroid. It sounds absolutely fantastic and quite fascinating right away, but let's try to actually terraform one in the simulator, Universe Sandbox. Let's imagine a situation where people took a random asteroid from the asteroid belt and carefully moved it closer to the Sun, placing it somewhere between the orbits of Earth and Mars. And its distance from the Sun is exactly 1.24 astronomical units, which is just a little farther than Earth but still closer than Mars. And this asteroid has a radius of almost 40 kilometers. So the initial task will be to increase the mass and size of this asteroid, because without that, it's simply impossible to terraform. Watch him. To do this, I'll take other asteroids and simply launch them like this towards the asteroid I need to terraform. Okay, so I'll place all the asteroids like this, and now let's let them get closer. There we go, they're getting closer. Now let's pause time. And this asteroid appears bigger to me than this one, at least to my eyes. Let's check. This one is 39 kilometers. This one is 38. This asteroid will destroy the other one. We need our main one to survive. So since this one is bigger, I'll reduce its size, and I'll check the others to make sure they aren't bigger than our main asteroid. Okay, everything's ready. Starting the simulation. Whoa, why did that one asteroid fly off like that? Oh well, let's hope the others at least hit it. I'll turn on their cosmic glasses, speeding up time even more. And there they go, all colliding together and gradually adding to its overall size and mass. By the way, let us check right now to see if it actually grew. Yes, it is currently 44 kilometers. Next, what I'll do is... Take a random asteroid from the available selection and carefully place it into a close orbit around the planet. I'd prefer a smaller object for this demonstration. There we go, allow it to have a glancing impact. And look at the radius reading on the display, and as you can see it's increasing. So, with this method we can in fact successfully increase the asteroid's mass. So yeah, I'll just keep going like this and going. Okay, I don't need to place them in orbit anymore. Now I'll just launch them for a direct collision. Just like that. Let's let the whole process play out. The object is already red hot. It's at 1300 degrees Celsius, but the radius of this asteroid is already approaching 100 kilometers. So, I'll just keep launching asteroids like this, just to be clear, until it reaches a decent mass. Next, we can use a random rock particle. These actually look a little different, for example. When you launch them, you don't experience the effect of things breaking apart, with fragments and all that. I don't know why that is, but the main point is that essentially by using these rock particles I can actually and easily add to the object's overall size and mass. Here, I've set everything to be based on the size and mass of the moon. Take a look at this current reading. I'll keep launching them, one after another, as needed. I need to get the total mass up to approximately around 5 lunar masses, which is the target. That amount will be enough to hold on to water, an atmosphere, and everything else that is necessary on this newly formed planet. So, after a while, I've brought the mass up to almost 5 lunar masses, and the radius is now 1.63 times the radius of the moon. In Earth terms, that's almost half of Earth's radius. As for the surface of this object, you can see for yourselves how it turned out. Lots of craters, and yet it's as if everything is flat here. The textures aren't very good, to be honest. Now we need to check what's going on with the axial tilt and the length of a day on this planet. The days are fast, a little over 13 hours, and the axial tilt is a whopping 52 degrees. We need to correct this situation. We can use asteroids again to set a normal axial tilt. And while we're at it, we need to slow the planet's rotation to make the days longer. I'll launch the asteroid somewhere around there. Let's see if we can get it all done without any issues using this method. We need to launch them somewhere around there. Let's speed up time a bit. For some reason, these asteroids don't seem to want to slow the planet down at all. It's really strange. Okay then, let's use a different tool. I'll take the random rock particles. Hopefully, they'll help and make this process more efficient. Okay, yes, these rocks are already helping. The days on the planet are getting longer. There, I'll keep launching them and we can see that the days are indeed getting longer, but unfortunately, the axial tilt is also increasing because of it. We need to find some kind of balance in where to launch everything. So, after launching some more asteroids, I finally managed to get some more or less normal values. The days on this planet are now just a little over 26 hours in length, and the axial tilt is 31.7 degrees. Essentially, this is a newly formed planet that has only just recently taken shape, you could say. So it's its core should still be quite hot. Yes, it says here the core temperature isn't very high, but it's 1835 degrees Celsius. I don't know if there can be a magnetic field at this temperature, but in principle, I think since the planet is young and the core hasn't cooled down, there should be some kind of magnetosphere here. Plus, the planet rotates pretty quickly on its axis. So let's set the magnetic field strength to 1 Gauss. Unfortunately, the simulator does not generate it automatically on its own, nor does it display it, even if it is possible. You have to add it manually through the settings. 
have a magnetosphere. Next, we need to add an atmosphere, water, and everything else that is necessary for life to eventually form. Because right now, its composition is just iron and silicate. I've launched three asteroids. In one of them, we have nitrogen. Here, we have oxygen. And this one is just water. And now they're all going to hit the planet at the same time and add the necessary elements for an atmosphere and for liquid water. Let's watch how this process unfolds. Wow, what a collision. And the planet is transforming right before our eyes. It all looks a bit unusual, but we can see nitrogen is being released into the atmosphere and clouds are already starting to appear on this planet. And here I take it we have liquid. Wow, look how it's all being covered by the nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. For now, I've just launched these elements into the environment. Later, if needed, I'll add a bit of carbon dioxide or perhaps more oxygen or nitrogen if there isn't enough present. But that's how it turned out. We need to wait a little longer for all these gases to spread out as evenly as possible and then we'll see what we actually get. In the end we got this rather strange looking planet. The elevation maps that you see here are quite bad. Well the main problem right now is that the temperature here is very low. Although the pressure is close to one atmosphere. Well I think it wouldn't hurt to add some kind of greenhouse gas here. Because we have enough oxygen, in principle, and there's also nitrogen. But adding a greenhouse gas, for example carbon dioxide, wouldn't be a bad idea. For that I'll use this tool here. I'll select carbon dioxide here for demonstration purposes and launch it just once. There, the particles are flying and that will be enough. Now, so I don't have to wait, I'll even out all the gases across this planet. And now I'll speed up time and we'll watch the temperature. It should now start moving towards positive values. Let's see. Yes, the planet is starting to warm up. And it's already warmed up so much that vegetation is starting to form on this planet. Cool. And the average temperature is already above zero degrees. Let's see what the final temperature will stabilize at. But look, vegetation has already covered almost the entire planet. Wow. Well, in short, the temperature has stabilized with an average of about 15 degrees Celsius. But one thing worries me. There's a lot of carbon dioxide here. A whole 0.235 of Earth's atmosphere. That's a lot. It would be very difficult for a person to breathe on this planet. You could even say impossible. I actually launched quite a lot of it. And that was a pretty big mistake on my part. I'll have to remove it with manual settings because if not I'd have to destroy the planet and start from scratch. I don't know how to remove it from here without manual settings so sorry guys. I'll just leave this amount of carbon dioxide. This of course will immediately cause the temperature on this planet to drop quite significantly but in order to compensate for that I can simply add yet another additional atmospheric layer to this planet and that will solve the problem and that's it. That way the atmosphere will simply become denser and the pressure is almost one atmosphere. In the end it did get hotter across the whole planet but the temperature is more or less acceptable and by the way it's quite even across the entire surface of this planet. The average temperature is about 24 degrees celsius and at the equator it's about 35 degrees and now we actually need to address and work on the elevation map on the planet's surface. We could just leave it as it is but you really have to admit it looks slightly uneven or crooked and not very nice. Let's try to fix that. To do that I need to go in here where the elevation map is actually generated and just simply change it. Here we can for example set it to planet 11 or planet 10, depending on what we want. Well, let's set it to planet 11. There, it's as if things look a little different here. We can just turn off the second map altogether. Well, that already looks a bit nicer, but the water is still only at the equator for now. If I spread the water out evenly, oh, 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 it's completely flooded, wow. How did that happen? Well, there doesn't seem to be that much water, but wow, I didn't expect it to flood everything. Anyway, let's imagine that humanity decided to drain this planet and we'll just go into the composition and slightly lower the ocean level. Oh, it turned out something like this. I'll just add a little bit of water here. There, for instance, let's say we have, for example, this level, but I would like more land after all. Something like this, most likely. It's all become really, really even now. If I try to even out all of the water here again, it just goes right back to how it was before. What is this? Well, these are simulator bugs. Because of this bug, 0.358 of an Earth ocean's worth of water just appeared here. What is this? Oh my, let's decrease this value and do it properly, making sure everything is done right. I'm not going to even out the water anymore. Oh, this already looks a bit different. I'll just reset the elevation map again, just in case. Oh, well, that already looks more or less normal. And I'll decrease the water level just a little bit more. I want the land to be dominant here. I want to create a sort of lake-like terra from this asteroid. Well, I think this will be good. 
In the end, our sea level is approximately 35 meters. Not very much, but that's the only way to create this difference between land and water. Now, about the atmosphere. The simulator always tends to set these kinds of fluffy and wispy cloud types in the sky. Since there is actually more land here than there is water, it seems logical to think that there would probably be fewer clouds overall. So let the very first cloud type be uh, this thin one right here. Nee. And as for the second one, well, we can just leave this wispy one as it is. In principle, it looks normal. Let's leave it like that. You could leave it as is. Is, but for an even more beautiful planet, you can set the fog to, for example, Earth-like. Now I want to place a few satellites for this newly formed planet. Let the first one orbit here, and the second one will be a bit farther out, at this distance. I think two satellites will be enough. Although, you know, I also see a small rotating satellite near this planet at a distance of about 8,000 kilometers. It's a small asteroid. And so, here are their orbits. They will be in stable orbits. There shouldn't be any interference. Everything is far enough from each other. I'll quickly show you these satellites. Here's the closest asteroid, with a radius of 40 kilometers. The second satellite is like this, with a radius of 321 kilometers. And the third satellite is this one. It's the largest, with a radius of 479 kilometers. In the end, the atmosphere on this planet is almost one atmosphere. But the probability of life, unfortunately, is only 6%. Well, whatever. But we see completely green continents, so everything is fine. But the simulator decided to show me such a low probability of life. Oh well. Although on the dark side of this planet, you can clearly see the lights of night cities. And by the way, let's go down to the surface of this planet. I landed somewhere around here, and let's look at the sky. We see the bright, shining sun. And we have these soft white clouds. And at night, I think, we'll be able to see the satellites that orbit this planet. Well, let's watch a sunset like this in Universe Sandbox. This isn't Space Engine, of course, but we can still watch some beautiful sunsets together. We see one of its satellites, and we see another satellite, the one that orbits even closer. And guys, I managed to do it. I terraformed an asteroid. Incredible. If you liked it, please support it with likes and comments. Thank you very much.